Hello and welcome to episode 260 of Ask Our Productions, a series where I answer your questions. So if you have a question you want to answer in next week's episode, leave it down in the comments section below. And this seating arrangement is probably temporary. I just felt a little too cramped over there with like my monitors on top of me and stuff. And I couldn't feel like the lighting was right. So for now, I'm gonna sit here until I sit somewhere else. First question from Richard says, have we reached the point where there are more A-falls than children who enjoy Lego? Certainly not. Um, the gap just isn't nearly as big as it used to be. If it used to be 5% A-falls and 95% kids, it's maybe closer to 20 or 25% A-falls and 80 or 75% kids. I don't know the exact numbers. I don't know what LEGO has released as far as research they have done into their own consumer base, but if you just go to like a Lego convention, you get a pretty good idea of just how many like little kids are still like having fun and enjoying Lego. Like when I was at the Atlanta Brick Con about a month ago, just the amount of like seven year olds that like were just there, it's kind of mind boggling. There's a lot of kids that they might not necessarily be like diehard Lego fans, but like this is a kid who just wants to be at a Lego convention today or their parents wanted to take them to a Lego convention today and maybe they'll buy three or four sets this year. They're certainly not out there buying a hundred sets in a year or anything, but the, the number of kids far outnumbers the adults. That's not to say we couldn't take them in a fight. The Passion says, will you put up Lego train sets in your house thanks to the cool vids? I would love to do some train stuff now that I kinda sorta have the space. I've seen a ton of videos, and this is where I'm really going with this, where people set like train tracks or ramps up on the stairs in their house and then just run trains down the stairs into something. That sounds like a good time to me, and my stairs are just open and free anytime I wanna use them to run a train track down them, so maybe I'll do something like that in the future. It does sound like a great time. As far as like an actual train setup, this is not the place that's gonna happen. Dylan says, where can I find the old file first battle pack? Just like any old Lego set, I typically go to eBay when I want a specific set right this second, and that's where I would probably recommend you buy that one. You're probably not gonna find it in stores anymore. It's been retired for like three months, but in that this question, you did remind me to look up the value of that battle pack about three months later. I'm just curious what it's worth now. And usually to get a vibe of what something's worth, I'll go on eBay and I'll do lowest price, buy it now, new in box, and just see what the cheapest one available in good condition is worth. So the cheapest one currently is 41 bucks and that's with a pretty dented box. That's actually higher than I was expecting them to be worth at this point. Cheapest new sealed USA on Bricklink that I can find is $31.49. That doesn't include shipping. So it appears they are still available at a reasonable price if for some reason you either don't have enough or didn't get one to begin with. They're on sites like eBay, Bricklink, and I'm sure sellers on whatnot auction them off occasionally. As with most retired sets, a third party marketplace is the place to be. Levi asks, does it get tiring and or annoying to answer all of the dumb questions dumb Lego fans can think of all of the time? I know it would for me. Now you say dumb Lego fans and dumb Lego fans don't watch the MNR Productions channel, so it wouldn't quite be possible for me to get dumb questions from dumb Lego fans because that just doesn't exist here. Now I'll be pretty straight up with you as far as what I do find annoying in the Lego space and the answer to that is certainly not my YouTube comments. I very much enjoy reading my comments. I read all of the comments every week on each Ask Them in Our Productions when I go and pick the questions. Asking the question is the only way to find out the answer. I've asked my fair share of dumb questions throughout my life and just been like, oh, that's the answer? Ooh, I shouldn't have asked that. That was very simple. You know, that sort of stuff, it's okay, it happens. This whole thing to me has been reinvigorated with the dark saber recently and i had another question from kyle which you can read i'll put it on screen now but i'm gonna work it into this some way but what i do find is really bad and annoying right now in the lego space is fans attacking other fans such as myself obviously for being a prominent figure in the space and having an opinion on something like the dark saber for expressing said opinion especially when said opinion is not one of a hundred percent approval of what lego is doing and i'm not going to show a lot of examples here but people have said some really really bad things about myself and others for expressing Lego opinions. And no matter what I or others are talking about, it's always attempted to be reduced to nothing but nitpicking, even if it's quite literally the worst clone trooper Lego Star Wars has ever made. 
I'm going to bring in someone else's quote here, but it perfectly explains what's happening in the LEGO Star Wars community right now. Try this as an example. Let's say I don't follow football, but I decide that Manchester United look exciting. I go to my first match and I sit next to these lifelong three generation supporters. They aren't happy with the team's performance and think the new management are idiots. I proceed to tell them, as a new supporter, that they should just stop watching football or find another team or just generally Go away, because you're not wanted anymore. Maybe the old fans have some weight to what they say. Maybe they've experienced the club at its best and want to see them continue being their best. But when I say I don't think the Darksaber is good, and I don't, I think that LEGO should have made it better, people's reaction to that is not, oh, it's actually a good Darksaber because of X, Y, and Z. Their reaction has very quickly become, you're whining, you complain about everything, and you're a man-child. And I'm like, dude, What's the deal here? I'm talking about a freaking Lego laser sword, which I think is bad, and I still do, and no amount of calling me names is gonna change that. Speaking of name calling, I've played Call of Duty for like 12 years now. Ever since my, literally the, the, the irony of the clip I'm gonna show you, the reason I started playing COD is because my grandma died. Shut up, your grandma's dead. I can't hear you, five and 10? Your grandma's dead. You're Right? I have been made fun of, called every name under the sun, for literally 12 years on Call of Duty. Calling me names online, I'm, I'm sorry to like the Instagram haters, just ain't gonna, gonna do it for you. People that want LEGO to actively be worse and lower quality. It blows my mind. Maybe it was asking too much to have a Darksaber that has a little, little bit of white printing on it, or a dual mold. Or maybe it's not too much because Ninjago does the same thing for like a bunch of their swords and this is clearly an echelon that LEGO has reached as far as quality for LEGO swords. It's not an insane thing to think the Darksaber is not as good as it could have been. Hence my comment, knowing what people would say, that's the joke within my comment, it's better than nothing. But part of Kyle's question asks how I deal with people being just ugly now that my channel has grown. They say some pretty horrendous things, but at the end of the day, I just block them. Like sometimes I will respond because I can't help myself. I'm I'm into the internet too. I get I get into that thing. I get it. It's fun. I like yelling at people online. You're one in seven. Your gameplay did all the talking it needs to do. To give Kyle the best closure on an answer though, I just don't take it that seriously. I mean, obviously I take Lego and how I perceive their product and enjoy their product very seriously and that shows in my videos. But as far as what commenters have to say about me and specifically people that I can obviously tell that no matter what I do, they will hate on me. I can't take that seriously. I would be incredibly depressed. And I know this whole answer isn't quite ignoring it, but you asked and I know some people would probably want to know how I handle haters online. Don't take it too seriously because uh, unfortunately those are the ones that make the most noise, but uh, the majority of the people don't feel that way. So keep that in mind. They did the same with Armored Best. You know, one Jar Jar Binks. Shut up, your grandma's dead. Honestly, I don't know if I'll leave any of the question I just answered in, but if I did, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. It was a bit of a deep dive and I talked a lot and had to cut out a lot probably. Mr. Incognito says, why does no one talk about the recent release of the NASCAR Next Gen Chevrolet Camaro ZL1? Probably because the name is so long. Sure, it's still Technic, but it's still a big collaboration between LEGO and a huge racing organization that we don't see too often. And I saw this in the LEGO store the other day actually. And yeah, it's definitely not not something a lot of people are talking about. I think the answer to the question that you pose though is because NASCAR just isn't that popular overall. I do agree it is a big collaboration, but I still think LEGO with its Speed Champions lineup of vehicles and then the larger Technic cars that are like the supercars, like the Lamborghinis and stuff, I think that stuff is just always gonna be more popular than anything they might do with NASCAR. I suppose another problem with NASCAR is you kind of pin yourself down to a driver. It's not like you can have a NASCAR car that kind of represents all of them. It's like Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. I forget the guy that drove Home Depot number 20, but I didn't like him because Lowe's is better than Home Depot, according to the cars I watched when I was young. Rebel Brick Studio says, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years time? I have one life goal for the next five to 10 years, literally one. All I want is an indoor basketball court. 
at my house. That is the only thing I currently want to achieve in life. In a reasonable amount of time so that I'm not like, I don't know, if I'm like 60 and have an indoor basketball court, that doesn't do me much good because I'm 60, but like that is something I really, really want to be able to afford. So I don't know if I necessarily see myself getting that in five to 10 years, but that is my singular like top of the list goal to achieve currently. Outside of that though, in five to 10 years, it's very unlikely I will still be living in this house. The goal with this house is to live in it for two to five years, hopefully have it paid off within that time frame because I do have a five one ARM loan, which basically means after five years, my interest rate can go up. And after I move out of this house, I don't know where I'm gonna go in five to 10 years exactly because I could stay here in the Orlando area. I might wanna go back home to, to Melbourne where I've lived for 25 years until now. I have also thought about moving to Georgia or Massachusetts, but it's so hard to say five to 10 years from now because I think in three years I could be living somewhere else again. And five to 10 years ago, I didn't think YouTube could be a full-time thing for me. Cod Gaming says, what is your workout routine? Currently, it's walking up the stairs a lot. I no longer skip leg day at all. Every day, in fact, is leg day for me right now. That's my only workout right now. I've had no time to go to the gym. Josh Thomas says, if Lego was to redesign the Battle Droid, what design would you want? I don't think they can change it all that much. I really, really do not. And I know people want separated legs and arms that have a joint at the elbow. And these are reasonable things to desire. I don't think that they would improve the experience though. If these wear poorly over the years, then you have a problem, especially when you're making a toy for kids. If it's an adult display set, I don't care. Like it's not gonna be a problem for me. But when it comes to a big part of the audience being children and they're gonna play with this and it's gonna have wear and tear, if the battle droid arms have a joint with just such a small piece of plastic that's that joint section, whatever, like over time it's just gonna wear and it's gonna become really loose. And then all of a sudden your joint is like stuck down and it never goes up. Like if you put it up and it's got a blaster in it, it's always just gonna fall down. You can already kind of tell this with some of the battle droids with their hip joint and their arm joints, they do become loose, but that problem would only be exacerbated by having smaller, more intricate joints. And I just don't think it would work or wear well. So I don't think they should ever redesign the Lego Star Wars battle droid. I do think they should give some consideration to the super battle droid though, as far as the leg connection goes, because over the years it doesn't perform well and it does snap quite easily. Um, so if they're gonna redesign anything, I think the super battle droid really should have that consideration. But I really don't think the battle droid should ever be meddled with. I think it's perfect the way it is and they shouldn't change it. Colin says, I just saw the M1 Starfighter Microfighter is 6% off at $14.99 for pre-order on Amazon. Have you ever seen a pre-order on sale before? I assume it will be $9.99 on Amazon shortly after release. I don't think I've ever seen a pre-order on sale before. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below if you have, but I mean, it's wild that they would even bother to put it a dollar off. It's very weird to me, but it hopefully is telling that Lego has really made a big mistake here in making this $16 and that it's not selling well and the sales are gonna be bad, bad for this and then the pricing will change. Maybe that's the only like sliver of a hope I'm seeing here. Um, it's pretty wild though that it's on sale for a dollar off. Like it's almost a slap in the face because we thought it was gonna be 15 to begin with and then Lego raised the price to 16 and then it's 6% off back to 15 again. It's like, bro. ZH says, have you heard the supposed rumor of Jabba's throne room being canceled? I'm not sure I believe it since the source isn't as strong and there hasn't been a ton of coverage, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. And I do believe this is actually a true rumor. I think the Jabba's throne room diorama for 2023 is either canceled or delayed, like not delayed within the year, but pushed back to another year. Um, I have to do an updated rumor video and I'll do all my research more so for that. But I've had a few random conversations with people I trust and the general vibe does seem to be that that set won't be releasing on May 1st. Hopefully it is just something that's being pushed back because it would coincide better with a Jabba sail barge like next year. Like the idea being that they would wanna have the Jabba the Hutt mold on the production line for two sets instead of one within the same time frame in 2024, 2025. So by pushing this back next year, it aligns better with the time frame for the Jabba's sail barge that we had leaked. So I think that's probably what's happening here. I would not expect this to be a completely canceled idea. I really hope not. Flowbricks wants to know the reasoning behind the summer Mandalorian sets being revealed before most May Lego Star Wars sets. And that's quite simple. They're revealing these as the show is releasing because pre-orders, yeah, Lego is doing pre-orders for these. And so if they have pre-orders available while it's hot, they'll get your money now. And you've already bought the set, even though the set doesn't come out for five months or whatever, you've already paid for it. Or like they have your sale guaranteed as opposed to if they aren't revealed now and they aren't available for pre-order now, 
you might just not care that much in five months and not pre-order it and not be that excited about, oh, I just love that episode. You might forget about that episode in five months. So yeah, they just wanna get your money now and that's why these are being revealed now and being put up for pre-order now, as opposed to like the May diorama sets being revealed. Like those are 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi sets. They will be just as cool being revealed a month from now as they would have been being revealed a month ago. But as far as like Mando sets go, like, yeah, they want to just get your pre-order money. Uh, if you have a question for next week, leave in the comments below and I'll see you in tomorrow's video or next week's Ask Coming R, whichever one you watch next. While the end screen's on, um, I've recorded for like an hour and a half for this. This is the longest I think I've ever recorded for a Q&A. So uh, this is gonna be a heck of an edit. The only, the wind condition was they cleared. So that the wind condition was scorched 150 before we do. That's the wind condition. You were the wind is heading six. south. Yeah, that's how, yeah, oh my god, you guys have one <laughs> ring so between you. Holy!